I'm Jim Casey, I'm the Director of City Development for the City of Kenosha, and my remarks here are very brief. All right, um, obviously, we all know that Catherine is here with us in spirit, and, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time speaking to that, because there are others who will articulate that much better than I can. Uh, but obviously, it was a pleasure to work with Catherine as we went through this process as well. But my only role here tonight is to thank not the partners in the building, but the partners in the design build process and the, and the fit, finish, and furniture process uh, that got the physical space here today. Uh, so I'm going to do that very quickly, and then I'm going to turn it over to Cindy Altergott, who will speak about partners and Catherine as well as others. Um, but I really do want to thank everybody that was involved in the design build aspect of this building. And it starts with our architect partners in design, Tom O'Connell. I didn't see Tom. I don't know if he was able to be here tonight. Dave DeBartolo has stepped in here uh, uh, towards, towards the end to help get us across the goal line. And Malik Parker was an intern with Partners in Design. Uh, let me say that any of you who have been involved with construction know that typically a remodeling or a rehab of an old building is almost always more challenging than ground up new construction. And the reason is you start peeling back walls and systems and roofs and you find out all kinds of things that you could not have anticipated. This is the most challenging project I've ever been involved in professionally, and I think most of the members of the design build team uh, would tell you the same thing. Uh, but all of these partners throughout the process uh, were professional, and when we encountered problems, uh, they proposed alternatives, we worked together, we found cost-effective ways to keep the project going, and they were flexible uh, so that we could, we could keep moving along. So in addition to the, uh, the architects, uh, the, the Partners in Design brought in interior design consultant, Renee King, uh, who's an interior designer and is also on uh, the staff uh, as a professor with uh, Columbia University. And she and some of her students are the ones who came up with the uh, Kenosha Emerging Leaders Academy design that you see out on the sign and you see on the, on the show here. Um, and thank you to Renee. And then when it came to furniture, and I know Jody Hart is here from Emmons Business Interiors. Raise your hand, Jody, you're a small one. There you are. Um, and it was a pleasure to work with Jody at Emmons Business Interiors. We worked very closely with Catherine, Cindy, and others to come up with the furniture that you see here. We can go from theater to soft seating. Uh, if you haven't had a chance, uh, please join us at the tours upstairs after this, uh, and we'll show you the rest of it. Um, and then uh, the engineering. Uh, Clark Deeds Engineers, and I know that Nira Patel is here, and uh, Nira, and all the, the, the our team at Clark Deeds. Uh, obviously, we redid all of the systems in this building, all the HVAC, electrical, plumbing, a new roof, uh, sprinkler system installed, uh, and all of that obviously took a lot of engineering, so thanks to Nira. And I don't know if Absolute Construction was able to get here. There he is in the back. Mike Weed back. Wave your hand again, Mike. And is Ray with us, Ray Redland? Uh, Absolute Construction folks did a phenomenal job. Again, we were throwing about every curveball you can get in a project, and Mike and Ray, Ray really took ownership of this building and, and watched over it as we went through the process, but uh, we wouldn't be here without the, the, the flexibility that they showed in coming up with solutions. Uh, I'm not gonna get into subs, there were many of them, uh, and, and again, Mike and Ray did a great job of managing that, but uh, suffice it to say that an awful lot of people touched this building. And then finally, I just wanna thank some of the members of the city team. I said at a department head meeting this morning that literally half of the departments in city government touched this building in one way or another. And it's always a pleasure for me, my dad was a cop in 32, to see city government pull together like that, and, and whatever you need, it was there. Until I called Rick Desipel at Streets yesterday, and he saw it was me on the call, and he said, Tim, you're out of favors. <laughs> um, and then, of course, he got the street sweepers over here to clean the parking lot and clean the streets around the building. But Rick at Streets, uh, Katie Elder at Parks, cleaning up the landscaping, and then just an a absolute special thank you to uh, one of our facilities guys, Andy LaPlante, is here with his son. Uh, Use all these accessories that you see around the building. Andy's been running around hanging stuff on the walls for the last week plus. Uh, and in finance and purchasing, Lem Gomez has just done a phenomenal job of remembering all the things that we forgot, like some of those extra accessories that we needed throughout the building. Uh, both of those guys have done a real heavy lift in the last month. And then finally, our IT department, uh, starting with Ty Kirkman, our former director of information technology, and Joe Gabanski, our current director of information technology in the back there. All of these screens, all of these monitors, all these computers, uh, these folks have done a phenomenal job in the last month, getting all that stuff hung on carts and wired and working and synced with one another. So again, just a thank you to the city team, a thank you to the design build team,
And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Cindy Altergott to talk about the other partners in the process. Cindy Altergott, President of the Act. being here today. This is a really exciting day for all of us that have been involved. And um, I want to start today by saying it shouldn't be me standing here right now. And um, I think you all know who should be, and I'm a very uh, poor stunt double, but I'm going to do the best I can. Um, and I'm honored to be that person. So before we get started, though, I just want to acknowledge elected officials that are here today. If you could please stand or wait, raise your hand. We want to thank you for being here today. Round of applause. And then there's some other people that need to stand because they should be up here with me. So I'd like you to stand when I call your name and I'd like you to stay standing until we're finished. The first is Tim Mahone with the Mahone Fund. Where are you, Tim? Mahone Fund Gateway. Cindy Jennings Gateway. Kristen Hoffman Hurston. Trina Patterson with the Park Side. Abigail Hanna. Carthage College. Anthony Larson. Generator. Jake McGee. throughout this whole process. Yes, you can sit, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> um, I looked back at my emails today, and I found that the very first time that Catherine sent the vision document that we've all seen, right, about Kila, was October of 2020, October 5th, 2020. And it was early 2021 that she brought the nonprofit partners together, and we were told, we walked through this building together, and she told us that we should plan and develop programs, but we're not allowed to move any walls. You can see that that did not happen. <laughs> that plan quickly changed. And then she brought us all together, um, nonprofit partners and all the higher ends. And we met right here, pretty much where these chairs are set up. But it was cold, and it was dark, and it was dusty. There was no internet or Wi-Fi to, to zoom anyone in. Um, and she sold this vision to us. And we worked here together with our coats on. Uh, I think we were a couple meetings in when someone finally decided maybe we should at least bring some coffee to warm everybody up. Um, and, you know, this, 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 is, this is the result. Um, we're here today. And if Catherine was here, she would say, we need to hear you. We're here today. We made it. So let's hear you. <laughs> and it took, yes, it took time, um, but we've gotten the right result. And so, um, and someone said, Tim said to me today, and now the fun begins. Um, now the fun begins. Now we get to bring Catherine's vision to life. She set the vision. We have the partners and the programs. Now we have this beautiful building. But there's two very important things left that needs to be added to make this recipe of Kila work. And the first is our students. We've got a few of them here. So a few of our Best Buy Team Tech Center students are already here. Raise your hands, students. Woo! They have been the missing ingredient, and they're finally here. And they will bring this place to life. And they will take Kila to a level that we can't even imagine. And second, separately, all those things I mentioned, partners, building, we're just ingredients. But together, together, we become a recipe for success. And that is the vision that Catherine saw. We need to, sorry, this is a stupid little metaphor. We need to mix together generously <laughs> and collaborate together um, to build upon each other's programs and make this what she believed it could be. Um, so, next, I want to invite um, one of those ingredients, 
I told him I wouldn't give him a hard time, so I'm just going to straight invite Jake McGee, Chief Philanthropy Officer for Jockey International. That was a little inside joke. Last time we had a, an event here, she got the crowd really overly riled up for my speech. And I said, hey, can you please not do that today? And she's like, oh, I'm gonna get to our recipes. I, I, you're gonna be the salt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's not much better. So I'm very happy with the brief introduction today. Thank you, Cindy. And thanks for the opportunity to have us be here. And I'm, I'm honored to speak on behalf of Jack. For those of you who don't know me, I have the privilege of leading our philanthropy and you know with a lot of the things happening in our neighborhood can heal a lot of the development and other investments we're just so excited about what's going on in our own backyard and when we heard about Catherine's vision and we heard about the goals of what this building was meant to be we knew immediately it was something that we wanted to be a part of and you know at Jockey we think that all kids have greatness inside of them and we just need to find opportunities and ways to bring that greatness out. And we think this building is such an opportunity to do that. Um, you know, so I just want to talk about some of the programs we're investing in here and why we're excited for this to be their home. Um, we've really had the privilege of working with Cindy and her team at the YMCA for several years now. And this facility is going to be the brand new home to our YMCA Teen Achievers program. And Cindy and her team are not people to brag, but I can brag for them. The salt can break for the sugar. Um, wow. And we, no, I threw myself out. <laughs> um, the kids in the program have had math and reading score be proven by more than 82% on their math scores the last two years of the program. That's going to be taking place here. Another thing that we are incredibly excited about is the Best Buy Team Tax Center that we've invested in. And I talked about us feeling like kids have greatness inside them. We need to find a way to bring it out. This is the tagline for Best Buy Teen Tech Centers. Every teen has dreams. Through Best Buy Teen Tech Centers, the Best Buy Foundation is working to make sure that they have opportunities to achieve them. And I'm a data person. You know, a jockey, we like to fund programs that have data backing behind them. This is some of the statistics for teen tech centers that are happening across the country. 96% of the teens are more optimistic about their future because they participate in this program. 76% of the teen tech center youth say they've increased interest in STEM. 97% of them say there's a caring adult who they can trust at their center. 81% of them say they come more than once a week. And they don't have Bevan, so I mean, we're gonna <laughs> share that statistic. And 88% of them believe their tech center engagement helped foster a sense of connection to their community right here in our backyard. So I have one last, I already blew my corny joke, so I, Devin, this was my original corny joke. I promised you t-shirts for the t-shirt press in the Teen Tech Center. I finally got those for you. The t-shirt press in the Teen Tech Center is the least cool thing that you'll see up there. And I'm sure you guys will notice that when you take a tour. Uh, but on behalf of Jockey and um, our organization, our passion for giving back to the community, we're just proud to be a small part of this. We thank you for the opportunity to bring this to our neighborhood and are excited to see the vision that Catherine had for the life. Thanks for having us. Before I bring up the next speaker, I just wanted to share a little story because you've probably been seeing all of these photos um, rotating on the screen and one of them may not make a whole lot of sense to those of you that don't know what it's all about, but there's a picture of, of Tim Casey, and he looks like he's standing by an opening of a vending machine, right? So we went to a facility in Milwaukee to look at furniture, to look at um, innovation centers, and this um, facility, we finished the tour, and she brings us to this, it looked like a, like a vending machine. And she puts her badge up to it, I thought she was buying us a soda at the end of the tour, I thought, well that's nice. But she puts her badge up to it, and this, the soda machine, actually I think it was a beer machine, if I remember correctly, um, opens up as a door, and inside is this lounge with you know record players and nice soft um, furniture, and Catherine wanted that secret room here. <laughs> and her office was right there in the back. We 
we, we affectionately called it the Queen's office, and we so wanted to build that secret room for her, and there's a little door we could have done it, so maybe we'll still do that one day. Uh, and with that, I want to bring up Catherine's daughter, because we have to have a little Catherine in this ceremony. It's only right. And so, Rashida Walker, please come up. There are so many people that we should be thanking, and 
I don't want to start going down the route and forget something. Cindy, you have done a villainous job in picking up a lot of the pieces and we appreciate it from the city's perspective of what you've done. And I'm sure from all the folks who are working with you how important that was. Jack. Yeah. <laughs> 